this is really unfortunate and I am the live uh, witness. Habiba Sarobi has lived through all of the twists and turns of Afghanistan's turbulent history. She served as a minister under former Afghan President Hamid Karzai and was appointed the country's first female governor. She also remembers what it was like when the Taliban was first in power in 1996 and she wasn't allowed at the table. I couldn't stay in Kabul that I thought that maybe my, uh, my children will be out of education and my daughter will be illiterate. So I went uh, to Pakistan as an immigrant. Once again, those who are able are seeking refuge across the border in Pakistan. Sarobi eventually returned to her country in 2001 and was able to help transform her community. But now she fears the younger generation will find it even harder than she did because their ambitions are so much greater. For example, my daughter, now my daughter, that on the first time that when Taliban came, she was on the fifth grade. Now, now she is with two master degree. The other son is, my son is medical doctor. The other one is the architecture. How they can accept that Taliban could push them back to stay at home, do nothing. The Taliban has said that women can work, just not anywhere men are present. We have fought for almost uh, 40 years to bring Sharia law system in our government. Sharia law does not allow women and men get together or sit together under one roof women face increasing restrictions. The United Nations Chief of Human Rights recently expressed concern that the Taliban's stated commitments aren't matching realities on the ground. Getting the new government to uphold international treaties, says Sarobi, will be up to countries such as Qatar, Iran and Pakistan because they have clout with the Taliban. To be honest, we, we have gone back 50 years, 50 years. Speaking to Global News from her home in Turkey, Sarobi says the road ahead will be a test of strength, especially for young people in large cities who have grown up with Western freedoms. Crystal Gamanson, Global News, London.